Number 17, Spear, a storage ring about 72 meters in diameter at the Stanford Linear Accelerator, which by the way was closed in 2009, has a 20 amp circulating beam of electrons that are moving at nearly the speed of light. How many electrons are in the beam? Okay, so the problem is a little confusing. It seems like there's a lot of disjoint uh, information. However, though, um, whenever that kind of happens, what I like to do is I like to start with very, very simple uh, ideas, okay? In order to find how many electrons there are in the beam, we might be able to find that by knowing maybe the total charge, okay? Or the charge of the beam uh, that is moving, right? Uh, if I knew the charge, pretend that I knew that, uh, you know, the particular charge of this beam was going to be, I don't know, 3.2 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs. And I know that every single electron has a value. And it would be negative, by the way, since we're talking about electrons, but it doesn't really matter. Let's just consider the magnitudes. And I know that the magnitude of the electron charge is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th. Well, then I would just divide this into that, right? And I'd find that there would be two electrons. So that might be an interesting way to go about and try and solve for the number of electrons. Meaning, instead of thinking about the question of how many electrons there are, why don't we focus on the question of what is the charge? In other words, or what's the change in the charge that's passing through a, the or a particular point? Now, once we do that, and let me just erase this. Once we do that, oh, there goes the picture. Once we do that, um, we might then be able to take a look at some of the other information in the problem, like, oh, they're giving me current. And I need to maybe find the change in charge passing through a point. Hmm. How are those two related? Well, maybe they're related. Not maybe. I mean, they are. They are related via this formula. Maybe we have to use this one, right? That the current is simply going to be the change in charge passing through a particular point divided by the change in time over which it took to pass that particular amount of charge. So now I begin to think about, well, let me solve this thing for Q because that's really what I'm after. And then I can simply do a division at the end. So change in the charge will be equal to the current multiplied by the change in the time. Okay. So I know the current, right? I know the current it's 20, but I don't know the change in time. Now, that basically becomes the new question. Okay, notice how my questions have changed to myself. First question I asked myself is, how many electrons are there? I started with the original question, right? So the number of electrons. Then I said, well, maybe I can figure that out by knowing the change in the charge. So then I said, well, what's that? And I looked for formulas and I thought of one, you know, not that I thought, I looked on the right-hand side over here and uh, I realized that, you know, one of them had change in charge in it, and it also had another piece of information in the problem, the current. So then I wrote the formula out and I said, oh, well, wait a minute. Now I need to know the change in time. So that's now the new question. How do I find the change in time? So from this information, do they tell us anything about time? No, they do not. So therefore, what I think then is I have to do, oh, mate, well, there's two things that could go through your mind, right? One is a, I must be wrong. Or the first question that should go through your mind is don't think you're wrong. Think of doing a substitution of sorts, okay? You don't know if you're wrong yet. Just because you hit a little roadblock doesn't mean you're going the wrong way. It just means you can't see right in front of you yet. So all I need to do now is I need to take this change in time and somehow find a formula that I can substitute on in. You also want to consider what other information there is in the problem. So they also told us the diameter of the ring here. So what does that help us do? How is diameter which is, or could be used to find the length, AKA the distance. How would those two things be related now? Well, via the simple formula, right? Velocity is equal to the displacement or the, dis you know, whatever. Who cares at this point? Distance over time, right? So what I then think is I'm like, well, wait a minute, I can find the distance because I know the diameter of a circle, right? And then, but also the velocity, did they say anything about velocity? Oh my goodness, it's traveling nearly at the speed of light. 
And that's kind of how it gets pieced together. So what I'm going to do is solve this for time, right? So time will be equal to then d over v, distance divided by velocity, basically, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply now uh, take this. So let me highlight this right here. And I'm going to substitute that now in for my time. Okay. So here, so we have the change in the charge is going to be equal to the current multiplied now by the distance divided by then the velocity. Okay. So what can we do now? Well, now we kind of have everything we need. We might just have to do another substitution. You don't necessarily have to, you can solve for the distance now that these charges have to travel. Notice they're moving in a circular path. Okay. If they're moving in a circular path, how do we know the distance? Well, remember this, the distance that a charge moves in a circular path is the same as its circumference, right? The circumference of the circle. And remember that circumference is equal to pi D. So now what I can do is I can basically just simply say that, well, the circumference is the same thing as the distance in this problem. So that's equal to pi D. These two D's I'm sure are confusing you as they would with uh, myself as well. So I'm just going to write a little D I S T and this will be D I A for diameter. So now what I'm going to do is do a another substitution. Let me change the color. And what do we get? This will be equal to the current multiplied by the, uh, by, by pi, sorry, times the diameter all over then the velocity, oh, excuse me, all over then. Yeah. The velocity. And, um, <clears throat> that's, that's it. Basically now take a look. Do we know everything in this formula? Do we know the current? Sure. It's 20. Do we know pi? Sure. Do we know the diameter? Yeah. They told us that it's 72 meters. Do we know the velocity? Yeah. It's at the speed of light. So now I can finally find, okay. I can finally then find my change in the charge. Okay. What I also could have done first was instead of doing all my substitutions here, I could have solved for the time first without doing substitutions by using this formula over here on the upper right, plugging in then the circumference for the numerator, speed of light for the denominator, then I would have found time. Okay. So I would have answered then this question and then I would have taken that and plugged it in so I could solve for the Q and then I go back. So you see how that works, right? You start with a big question. You start with the overall question, then you start getting to new questions. You get to a point at which you can actually solve something and then you just work yourself back. Okay. All right. So what's the answer, right? So it's going to be 20 multiplied by pi multiplied by the diameter, which is 72 meters, all then divided by the speed of light, which is about three times 10 to the eight. Okay. So let's plug it in. So we get uh, 20 times pi times 72 divided by three times 10 to the eight. And somehow that was raised to the exponent. So that's definitely going to come out wrong or raise. Yeah. So 20, sorry, one more time, 20 times pi times 72 divided by three times 10 to the eight. All right. So the change in the charge is going to be about one, whoops, 1.5. 1.51 or so times 10 to the minus fifth. Okay. Remember that's in coulombs. So now that I know this, I can now finally find the charge, uh, excuse me, find the number of electrons, right? Cause you know that 1.51 times 10 to the fifth coulombs of charge. You can do a little dimensional analysis here. Coulombs on the bottom, number of electrons on the top for every single electron. There's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs. And that's basically what we did before, right? We did our little division. I know that might be a little small there, but there we go. So it's just a division. So now take that answer and divide it by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th. And here we get a value now of about 9.42. So 9.42 times 10 to the 13th. And that will represent the number of electrons. Finally, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. I appreciate it. I really do hope this video helped. And if it did, please help us out. Hit that subscribe button, tell your friends, 
and uh, even hit the like button. Do it, I dare you. Take care.